Now, if you're not one, you might have one, and you'll definitely know one. They're a riddle wrapped in a conundrum, iced with a mystery, then coated... Jeez, Waleed, what is it? It's Generation Z. OK, get on with it. <laughs> They're 8 to 22-year-olds born between 1995 and 2009. My God. And they're the generation we're pinning our hopes for the future on. I feel like this year is really about, like, the year of just realising stuff, realising things. They're so millennial, they're post-millennial. So here's three things about Gen Z. They'll be the most formally educated generation ever, who are said to have around 17 employers across five different careers, working jobs that don't even exist yet. What are those? They are my crocs. They're digital natives, constantly connected and live for Instagram and Snapchat, carefully crafting their own personal brand. More than 60% of school leavers believe social media helps their career options. Homeboys can I like, get it. But that very tech reliance can also stress them out, with the pressure to feel popular, tech addiction and online bullying all high on Gen Z's worry list. I hope you're dabbing on them haters. I hope you're dabbing on them haters. Dab, 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 dab. They're the smart, tech-savvy, entrepreneurial generation. So how do older peeps relate to and engage with Gen Z? Claire Madden studies this incredible generation and has written Hello Gen Z to help us understand them better. Uh, Claire, I have two of these people at home. So uh, what are the challenges I'm facing right now? Well, parents really are facing a whole range of challenges raising this new generation, Gen Z, because they're growing up in a time that looks really extraordinarily different to even what it did a generation ago. So not only are you needing to keep up with what memes are and the latest streaks on Snapchat, um, but as soon as you probably worked out what dabbing was, the kids probably thought, oh, Dabbing is so done, it's not cool anymore. So just helping, you know, parents having to navigate how quick things are moving and helping their kids navigate, you know, screen addiction and even developing a secure sense of self that's not just dependent on how many Instagram likes you got today. Well, speaking of screen addiction, I thought it was really fascinating hearing that the Gen Z realise that they're addicted to social media. They love it and they know it's part of their life, but they find it incredibly stressful and it causes them a lot of anxiety. So as a parent of Gen Zs, how do you help them through that? What should we be doing? That's right. So it was a surprising to hear that they are aware that they're addicted to social media, spending about 2.7 hours a day just on social media. And when I was sitting down with Jamaica and Lauren, they were talking about how stressed they were in keeping up that whole FOMO thing, which is the fear of missing out. And they said that they actually tag team when each other shower so that one of them can keep across social media so they can fill in the other one after they've, you know, had their shower. So I think parents can help help um, create that secure sense of self and identity that they're accepted and they belong and they're valued um, in an offline setting. Claire, it's an interesting stat that Gen Z will have uh, possibly 17 employers over five different careers. So for any bosses uh, of young people who are watching, I mean, how do you manage a Gen Z? -er? I, I mean, and do they respond differently? Yeah, they really do respond differently at work. And when I asked them about what was the most important thing or what do they think their jobs will be like, many of them, including a, a young guy called Jack who was born in 2001, he just said, oh, I don't, I don't really mind what I do as long as it's something that I enjoy. So for managers and leaders needing to create a culture which engages them not just with coming to work and doing the task, but engages their heart, their, um, their passion, will be increasingly important as these Gen Zs are going to be more than three in ten workers by just 2025. Claire, enjoying the book. Love the uh, Generation Z glossary, uh, which is very helpful uh, for parents. What's in that? Um, well, I realise how much of my kids are swearing in front of me, to be honest, uh, <laughs> through acronyms. Uh, AF, FFS, CBF, FML. Um, they're really... It, it shows initiative, doesn't it? <laughs> They're such a creative generation and because they're spending so many hours on social media and as a global generation, they are creating this lexicon um, faster than we can actually keep up with. Um, yeah, so they're very creative indeed with the words they're using. All right, Claire, well, it's been great to chat to you tonight. Uh, your book, Hello Gen Z, is out now. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much. <laughs> One of the acronyms.
things I read today, which is very helpful for parents, not so good for kids if you're using it out there, is POS, which means parent over shoulder. So when you come into a room and your kids are online, <laughs> your Gen Zs, and they're maybe talking about something they don't want you to oh. see, they write POS, which means parent over shoulder, which means stop tech, like stop writing back, stop texting. Wow. Yeah, when I was on the computer growing up, my dad was POS. He was usually fixing the computer paper that would come off the, uh, the printer. <laughs> This book, this book is hectic. Um, uh, this, that's a word I've picked up. No, it's hectic. Yeah. Carrie always is hectic around, and I have to remind that's her so how old cool. she is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh,